Okay, first order of business is to create a good base map. So I'm going to let this just sit for a moment because I know I want that to be on top, but um, I'm going to make a base map first. So I'm going back to my source data, and I think I'm just going to bring in my original kind of relief. Where is that relief projected? Yeah, that's pretty good. I'll bring in that. And on top of that, I want to do my land. I think I made a land tiff right here. And this is the land that included um, all land, including the islands, not the mainland, right? Because I also made this file, which um, was the land without, without the islands. Don't care about that. So I'm going to make the water, in this case, a... Um, I think I'm going to make it blue and make the land green. So let's just see here. Blue and green is going to go like this. Boom. Zero is land. That should be green. OK. One is water. And that should be blue. Let's just go with that. OK. <laughs> I got them backwards. Whoops. One is land. Zero is water. OK, a little bit better. And now I'm going to make this semi-transparent so that underneath it, the relief comes through. So now I go transparency to 50. And I think I'd like to add a little bit of hill shade as well. So I'm going to just run my relief projection through a hill shade. And I don't know if you remember, but it's I think my, re my relief projected is in meters. Um, my relief feet is in feet for the vertical unit, but I, the original one was in meters. So I'm just going to go run a hill shade one to one, right? Meters to meters. The XY is in meters and the vertical is in meters. Should be good. Let's see if it works. Yeah, not bad. Kind of kind of ugly looking, but it's we're going to make it super transparent. So I'm going to make my base map actually just make it one big group. And this group is together, that's nice. Um, I'm going to put the land, yep, let's make everybody very transparent. So I'm going to make the hill shade, I'm going to make it almost 80% transparent, 85. Okay, and I'm going to make the land very transparent as well, maybe like 75, the whole kind of land water thing. And then underneath that, I'm going to make this very transparent as well. Properties. This is the digital elevation model. I'll make this, no, let's just go with 65 or something. Yeah, that's, looks, that looks respectable for now. I think that's, that's interesting. Um, we can go back and play with it later. On top of this, I'd like to make, um, I'd like to show this information, but I don't know if you can tell, the biggest problem right now is the black color, the bad ground. So I'm going to change that to clear. And to do that, I go to style, and then under my kind of color scheme here, I just double click that and then set the opacity to zero. Opacity is the opposite of um, transparency, right? So, okay apply and it's starting to look pretty cool part of me thinks that I might want to make um, this a little different because um, I'm not sure if I like the way it looks it, it looks too happy to me it's very far away it's not bad but it's not the best I'm gonna just make it into kind of a purple and just see what that looks like yeah, that's a little bit better. What I'm trying to get at here is that the best category is green. Um, so that's not too bad. Okay, um, I've been struggling a little bit behind the scenes, and I'm going to tell you why. Um, what's going on is I don't like how um, speckled our information looks because um, this information on top is being... Um, it's kind of misrepresenting what we're doing. Um, it's speckled because we've selected one of our pieces of data 
from the terrain data, which was very detailed, or much more detailed than our AIS data, right? So we have one piece of data that's at this scale, or that kind of grain, you should say, and another piece of data at the grain of the terrain. And they're so different that this is bothering me a lot up here, how kind of very clunky it looks. So I want to smooth out this whole thing. So far, we've been working in the vector and raster kind of QGIS toolboxes. Um, for this tool called the majority filter, it's in the processing toolbox, which we haven't used at all, but we're going to start using. So not bad practice. Open up the, the toolbox here. You can either type it in majority filter or you can go to geo algorithms and it's under raster filters and majority filter is going to run a small kind of window um, all over this raster. It's going to s kind of smooth out these edges here so that everything gets more blob like. It's going to take away a lot of these these very kind of pockmarked small objects and make kind of bigger blobs based on where are there a majority of pixels in any given area. It's We're going to be generalizing is the easy way to think about it. And I'm going to generalize um, kind of on the scale of assuming that as we remember, this is between 1 and 1 1.2 kilometers, or kind of, um, you know, 1,200 meters, and our, our pixels are about 70 meters otherwise. So it, open it up, and you'll see, okay, majority filter, we want to filter our ground quality. I want to search by a circle because we're out in the middle of the ocean, and it means more to me um, that at any location we look in every direction equally, not kind of in a square. The radius, I'm going to go with 8 here. And the reason for that is that the radius is 8 times a grain of 70 meters, right, which is 560 meters, which is about half a kilometer. And a kilometer, um, half a kilometer times 2, right, one for each side of the radius, means that we're each circle is looking at a region that's just over a kilometer, which is kind of our, this is our very basic way of representing um, grain. Um, that's, that's kind of the size of our generalization that I, I think is appropriate. Um, I could explain more about it, but I'm just going to go for it because I think it's going to look pretty good. And this is mostly for cartography. Um, I would definitely write in my notes that I did a majority filter um, to kind of um, make the level of generalization appropriate across the different layers, but here we go. Ground quality, circle, radius, and I'm just going to go for it. Um, this is something that works only on integer, well, for our purposes, only on integer rasters. So radius 8, boom, boom, boom. It's going to make a temporary file. I'm fine with that. Okay, the default is the usual binary, which is not, or black and white, which is not great. Um, so I'm going to copy this style because this is actually what I want, right? I don't want to have to go in and reclassify all of these things. So I'm going to go to my ground quality, say copy style, that's under styles. And I'm going to right click my filtered grid and say paste style. And, um, you can't quite see it, but when I shut the bottom one off, it just kind of made everything a little a little smoother, right? So if I if you look at that versus this, it just um, the regions kind of cohere a little bit more. So you can play around with that filter. It's kind of a neat one. Um, you might even bump it up, you know, go to ten a ten pixel radius for your filter and um, and play around with that. I'm happy with this. I'm going to stick with it. And I'm still not happy with my color scheme though, so I'm going to do something. I'm going to flip flop one more time and make my sparse co far color um, change again. I'm going to try yellow. And I like that. I'm going to call that good. Um, from here on out, I hope that you're getting more comfortable with the fact that you could manipulate the town shapefile, you know, make that 
into part of your cartography, maybe just add the names, do a dissolve so you don't have all the islands, you know, that kind of thing. So, good luck, and I hope this was useful.